What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Ryan Myers Expeditions. Today I'm here with Ulukoa, a friend from the archery club. I take him out here today. He hasn't been spearfishing very much at all or a little bit? A little bit. A little bit? Yeah. Mostly just three prong? Yeah. Yeah. So mostly just colas, three prong, that kind of thing. We're going to put a gun in his hands and we're going to see what happens. Um, I've also got some new gear. Check this out. New polo sub suit from Italy. Thank you so much, American Dive Co. I've also got some new shoes. Check these things out. I've been wanting a pair of these forever. I kicked one about maybe about six months ago when I first got to the island, hey, about a year ago, and they were freaking Ferraris on my feet. So I cannot wait to jump in the water with them. We're gonna see how they feel. We will see you guys in the water. So I finally upgraded all of my gear and I cannot freaking wait to get it all out there in the water and test it out. However, it's super important for you guys to kind of understand this if you ever get a full new set of gear or multiple new things at a time it's important to not take everything out at the same time you've got to kind of work it in one piece at a time remember free diving is 100 percent about comfort everything you do out there is in some way free diving and therefore the more comfortable you are the better you'll feel and the more fish you will shoot so i like to kind of incorporate a piece or two at a time and do it slowly over time so that everything can kind of get familiar with me, with myself, before I just jump in with everything on. So right now I'm testing out my new Setma fins. I cannot, I'm so pumped on these things. I've probably had like 20 different pairs of carbon fiber fins in my life, and I've borrowed some Setmas, and I was like, oh my God, this is it. I finally found it. Like I've always kind of looking and searching, and everything was kind of similar. And Finally, I was like, this. these feel different on my feet. This feels like a real advantage. So I got myself a pair of those from American Dive Co. And I got myself a Polo Sub wetsuit, which is a custom suit made out of Italy. They also make regular standard size suits um, that you can get right here in the United States, right off the shelf, that are incredible. So I'm testing out both those pieces of equipment. <clears throat> I'm working on a discount code for you guys. So I'll let you guys know when I get all that sorted out and when I decide kind of how I give these guys like my full review. You know, I want to make sure that I'm not peddling things to you guys that I haven't used myself, that I don't love myself, and that I'm not 100% sure are going to work for you guys too. So that's what I'm kind of doing today. I'm just really lightly, easily getting back in the water, shooting some fish with a three prong, practicing that new gear, and just getting familiar with being out there in the water again. And I, I want to stay super nice and shallow. I'm just looking for coles today. That's kind of my main goal. My main goal actually is to get Ulukoa a couple fish. So I gave him my gun and I took the three prong and I'm just, just working the shallows, collecting what I think is, is probably some of the best eating fish out here in Hawaii are these little coles. Whenever I use these three prongs, it's seriously humbling to me. And I was just talking to Justin about this the other day. I'm like, man, I still miss a lot of fish. And I'm not sure exactly what it is that I've got, you know, what my problem is. I know that I've overpowered my cowabunga here just a little bit too much, I'm sure of it. But also there's just there's just kind of like this schooling fish effect that occurs when you have so many fish around and you don't really care. It's like every fish is not like like life or death. You know, you're just kind of like, oh, there'll be another cole in 10 seconds. So it really doesn't matter. And because of that, I kind of kind of slack off and relax too much and I feel like kind of mess up more shots than I really should. But I'm trying to get better and better and really kind of go out there and keep track in my head of how many fish I've missed. And that's kind of one of the numbers that really matters to me a lot of times when we are out there spearfishing. At the end of the day, I'm like, man, I missed three shots or I missed five shots. I don't really care how many fish I shot because in reality, that kind of depends on what I'm looking for. You know, if I wanted to go out there and shoot 300 fish, I could do that. But what number really matters to me is how many fish did I miss? How many mistakes did I make? Because everything I do is training for that world championship, for that next big, big tournament. And you cannot miss a fish in those tournaments. You just, it can't happen. So one of the things I really find myself doing to try and make less mistakes on these cole is to take more time. I try to sit down there and really pay attention to how this fish is moving back and forth on the reef and really wait for my moment. Because as soon as you fire, you've kind of busted them up a little bit, you, you've scared the school, maybe you wound a fish and you lose it, which is never a good thing to happen. So I've kind of been trying to take as much time as I can down there to sit and really relax and really wait 
for my moment because I'm not Justin Lee. I'm not going to sit out there and freaking get eight kool aids in one dive. So I know that I really want to get two is kind of my goal. I take one shot, get that fish, hold it in my left hand, to reload, take another shot, get that fish, go to the surface. And that's kind of how I find for myself that I'm most efficient. Didn't really do a great job of filming Ulakoa today, but he showed up with his first Nanui, which I think is one of his first fish on the spear gun, and that's always a pretty sick experience. I Little do I know that I'm actually going to have to eat this Nanui later on in the day, so I'm not sure if I would have given him the spear gun if I knew that that was going to happen. There you go, man. Nice yeah. Nanui. So one of the ways I kind of struggle with three-pronging also is making sure that you have enough lead on to be comfortable sitting on the bottom. You've really got to sit there and not move to be able to hunt these things properly and to be able to hunt anything properly in shallow water. And because of that, because of the way buoyancy works and the way your lungs compress as you go down, you need more lead to hunt in shallow water than you do in light, in deeper water. So I usually keep a weight or two in my, in my float and I can kind of switch on and off if I know that I'm going to be in shallow water. So you can see me sitting there, pausing, waiting, holding onto that rock, being perfectly stable, and waiting to see the fish that I want kind of make a mistake and do the right turn so I know I can get a high percentage shot, not wound a fish, and land another one and make the most out of my dive. Let me go, let me say everything is not okay. You're breaking nice anymore, nothing's like it was before. comes over with another little fish here and this is actually a king cole so very much related to the regular coles that i was shooting but it's a little bit bigger and one of my favorite beginner fish because it's big enough to shoot with the spear gun but still prolific enough that beginner guys can go out there and, and have a hope of shooting something delicious while i'm out there mostly collecting coles i'm always kind of looking for other fun three prongable fish and one of those fish that we find out here is the Aveo Aveo, or I think it's called a glass eye snapper in Florida. I see them eat them over there, but cool little fish, bright red, lives down in these dark caves. Not as common as like say a menpachi, but moves a lot slower. So usually when you see it, it's kind of hovering way back in a hole. And if you wait perfectly and hold onto a rock and kind of position yourself, you can kind of wait until you get the perfect shot on these fish. And that's what I'm doing right here. I can see him kind of down in there. I know it's hard for you guys to see, but he's in there and I managed to hold on until I can get my perfect shot and then just wreck one of these delicious Aveo Aveos. So a lot of the guys like to fry these and eat them even more than they like the coles. And speaking of other things that we like to three prong out here, I saw this taco and I usually, I've never speared a taco before in my life. But I saw this thing and I really wanted it and I was like, there is no way that I'm going to grab this thing from where he is. Let's try and shoot him. So luckily, it's completely legal out here in Hawaii and I stuck this guy and was able to harvest this delicious taco, take it back to Bula and Ulakoa's house and, and see what kind of madness they would come up with with a very traditional food out here in Hawaii. Guys, what are your thoughts on spearing octopus or taco? I know a lot of places in the world is kind of frowned upon, but here in Hawaii, harvesting taco is very common, so I'd love to hear from you guys here in Hawaii. Taco?
cruising around again and I see another one of these Aveo Veos and same situation as before, always way deep back in there in a crack and you kind of just got to take your time, hold on to something and take night like this one, a nice long shot all the way through a couple different boulders to make it happen. And this one right here, luckily I managed to stick it way back in there and kind of maneuver this thing out of there for another one of these just beautiful fish. And then to finish off the day here, Ulakoa connected with another Nanui, and that would turn out to be our food when we got back to his house, a really traditional kind of poke style made with these fish. So stay tuned guys, because it's pretty sick. Well guys, super cool little dive there. Did a lot of three pronging. Let Ulukoa take that uh, that spear gun and, and shoot a lot of fish. Is that pretty cool? Yeah. First, uh, first real spear gun action. Kind of. Yeah. Well, we got a bunch of fish there. A bunch of kole, nice veo veo, one taco, whole bunch of Nanui, Nanui Slayer, and one of these, one of my favorite fish, the King Kole. Great to eat. Nice dive, bro. So back here at Bulla's house. <laughs> Bulla, what are we doing with that? Sweet in the hair, bro. That's sweet. Yeah, for most people, they know, oh, this is like candy. What is that? So that's gonna be the flavor. Stoked, another super cool Sunday here in Hawaii, just in the garage, cleaning fish with everybody. Fry fish, this is, this is this is life out here. We're gonna do something with this Nanui too. I don't think I've ever eaten a Nanui, so that'll be cool. What are these for? I think, no, I think poke. I no, no, know. we already took oh, the poke. Yeah. Ah! Oh. Oops, don't tell Bula. Okay, so Nanui, <laughs> I'd rather eat it like this, just with salt, and most of the Hawaiians would agree with that. I made this sauce on the side. This from us white boys. <laughs> for, no, not necessarily. <laughs> Because a lot of people, even some Hawaiians, not eat them like this. Yeah, no, that's serious. I don't know if I can eat it like that. You know, like, no, it's my favorite. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, but I, I cleaned it. I, I went in the house, I took yeah, the colander, I rinsed it with water, I okay. left it in the colander, yeah. and then I choose salt. So, okay. the flavor that most people think is because that bug is straight from the ocean. But I don't know, yeah. you try it for you white guys. <laughs> Let's kick them in and show you All right. oyster sauce okay. and green onion. Straight into Nui there. That would be, again, a chub in Florida. Skin on, no okay. dipping, just salt. I don't, I don't know if I can do this. Just try it. <laughs> you might disagree. Yeah, do, you eat, do, you, do you eat poke? <laughs> it's okay if you get it. Is it good? Uh, too fishy, yeah? Still yet. <laughs> it's not bad. The skin was the worst part. Oh, okay. You know? That's my least favorite part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The skin, the skin was the worst part. Yeah, it's all good. That's why I figured at least you try it. No, no I tried it. I, I think I'm done. I, yeah. <laughs> That's it, huh? You guys like it. Wow. Um, it, it, it's strong, but it's not... It's the best Nanui Poke I've had, and I've had it a couple times. Um, like I said, usually it's at, on accident at a party. Taco kimchi. It doesn't look like the store. That's good. That's good. This passes. We need a lot of stuff, man. I know you eat a lot of stuff. I don't think I'm local enough for the for the Nanui, man. That was that was pretty hardcore. At least you didn't try, bro. Yeah. Maybe uh, I won't embarrass myself so bad eating eating some cola. Let's go back to what I know. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. No, you got to say it loud. You got to say it loud. You got to be good. Thank you for watching. Okay, try again. Be very excited. Yell. Thank you for watching. No, no, no. You got to enunciate. Yeah.